Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Revely. This show is really exciting today because with me I have someone who has really captured my attention. In fact, the passion that he has and what he is going to bring out today shares a lot about the things that I have as well. In fact, when I talked to him, he had already captured on screen some of the things that I talk about with a lot of other people. He is, wow, I've got to tell you, he's an incredible man because he's an author, a film director, a producer. He owns his own production studio, and he has really encapsulated something that is quite remarkable in, oh gosh, I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about his book, his documentary, um, in what, I'm going to let him share all of it. I have seen the documentary, I reviewed the book, and I want to talk to him to express some of the things that I think are really poignant about not only what is in the documentary, but the things that I really think when you read the book, and I really want you to grab a copy, that are things that you need to really take a really hard look at in your own life and think about and talk about amongst your family, colleagues, and others. So without any further ado, film director, owner of Wright Film Productions with me, Kevin Douglas Wright. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Rebecca. And thanks for that nice uh, introduction. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I would love to share the title of this, but I'm going to let you do this because this is yours. This is, you're the author of the book. This is your documentary. And I am so mesmerized by what you have found in this, what you have brought out and the things that I've shared and talked about, not only with you, which kind of blew me away when you and I were first talking, you were kind of, you kept this under hat. You just let me run with this. (laughs) And it kind of cracked me up because here I am just (laughs) rambling on about my view in society and how I was really disappointed with where we were at and how, and this was all of the things you had done your research on and it already Mm -hmm. went with this. And I thought, I don't believe this. (laughs) And at the end of it, and I watched the documentary and I just thought, wow, here he was. This is a man that just let me, let me go with this. So let's talk about this. Talk to me first. Let's share the title of what you let's share the title. Yes, the, the title of the documentary and the, the supporting book is I Learned It From You. It's I Learned It From You. And it's a documentary. And to just kind of describe it in one sentence, I, I normally just tell people it's sometimes what someone teaches can have deadly consequences. And that's supposed to kind of trigger our minds to just look and and, and try and wonder what does that really mean? And then when you, when you jump into the film or into the book, um, you're just taking on this journey, taking this journey uh, where I've interviewed six people and I just randomly selected six people and I interviewed them and I asked them the same six questions. And these questions were just a way to try and show like how we've we've come to be where we are today and when you when you watch each person's story unfold in the film or inside the book it just really takes you takes each individual takes yourself back to when you were younger when you were a smaller person when you were a child and it makes you kind of really just look and and question and try to answer the, the questions yourself, you know, because the, the, the questions are pretty basic. Um, when I interviewed each of the six people, I didn't tell them what the questions were beforehand. 
So that really helped to really just, I wanted to, I wanted each individual to actually really think back and not kind of be prepared. So um, it's just a way to really uh, examine just things that go on in society today. I think this is really profound because in this day and age, and if you think about where we are, there are so many things that are still passed down generationally that Mm -hmm. we don't think exist and it does Mm -hmm. it is still there and it's very interesting that not only are they there culturally from within our own families but they're passed down through things that we find in our society that come through television and media and are Correct. also things that are pitted from things we see interculturally in subcultures through yes. f- things that we find through our friends and things like that. But ultimately, it's very interesting that the questions that you asked, even as you asked them, they brought images or things in the six senses in myself that I could Mm -hmm. identify with that I had long thought that I had Mm -hmm. forgotten about. And yet Mm -hmm. our minds are like a computer and we go back to these little files that we have and they bring recall. Mm -hmm. You start beginning to remember, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I now can remember this. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, people only start bringing these things up within ourselves when some incident happens or when we go to therapy or Mm -hmm. we have an assignment in our freshman year of college humanities Uh class or sociology class or something Mm -hmm. like that. And these things are actually really important. These questions that you asked are very important in how our lives are shaped in interacting with each other. And this is a very Correct. important thing in, mm-hmm. in the world, in our, especially yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I always also explain how, how the documentary came to be. It was just one day I was, it was a small family gathering, nothing, nothing like, it wasn't a holiday or anything like that. Everyone just happened to stop by my parents' house at the same time. So I was talking to my parents and I had asked them a question that I had never asked them before. Now, I didn't have the idea for a documentary at that time. I had already done uh, my first little small film, which which was not a documentary. So while I was waiting to just really totally finish that little film that I did first, I was having this conversation with my parents and I had asked them a question I had never asked them before. And when I saw their reaction, like they were really thinking back, trying to remember like the very first time that this, you know, that this question that I had asked, they were trying to remember like when it affected them or, or something like that. And then it just, something grabbed a hold of me and, and said, wow, you have to ask this question to as many, you know, you have to ask, ask this question along with the, the questions prior to it and the ones after it and really just record those answers from just everyday average ordinary people from all different walks of life. And from that moment, after I spoke to my parents and heard their responses, um, their responses are not in this documentary. I might do that at a later date because there's, it's, it's very, very interesting, very interesting when you see their point of view of you know of how they grew up because my dad he grew up in the north my mother grew up in the south so those contrasting viewpoints so once i felt that really grab a hold of me i just never stopped i just said okay let me just turn this into a documentary so um i posted information on facebook and said hey i'm i'm making this film this documentary for i need real people um, if you're interested, you're, you're just going to come, we're going to meet, and I'm gonna, going to ask you just six simple questions. And, and amazingly, I got a big response, uh, and I had a lot of people to go through. And when 
I had all of the footage, the hours and hours and hours of footage, then I was, it was kind of funny because I said, wow, like, okay, I got all of these, these hours and hours of, all of these hours and hours of footage. Now I have to turn this into something that someone's going to watch and I have to narrow it down to, uh, to like an hour and a half. And so I waited maybe like a week or so. And then all of a sudden it just came, you know, as I went to do the editing, it just all fell into place. And that was surprising to me also because having that so much footage, I just thought that, Oh, this is going to be hard to do and hard to narrow down. But it was just amazing that the, the, the patterns were just there and it just was so easy to just put everything together into one, you know, one movie. And after I finished the film, um, I did a, a premiere in South Florida and, uh, it was it premiered in a small movie theater in downtown Fort Lauderdale, and the response that I got from that was extremely good. Um, just the people that came up to me after the the showing, uh, all different age groups, but there were two uh, retired school teachers in the audience, and they came right up to me afterwards and they said, "Hey, look, you really need to just like get that in, somehow get it into schools." They said, "Well, we don't know how you're going to do it, but somehow." just keep going because it's something that all different age groups should really just take a look at. So once I spoke to those two teachers, the wheels start turning in my head and I said, well, maybe I should put it in a book format also because I know sometimes it's just hard to sit down for, you know, a complete hour and a half. So I said, well, let me turn it into a book. But I had already had a little bit of experience writing books just like, um, just uh, like, like small short stories. So it wasn't that hard for me to turn the, the, the documentary into a book. And the documentary pretty much follows the, the book. So they both, so let's say you didn't see the film, you're not really gonna miss that much, but it is a, probably a good idea to see both, to do both because in the book, there's just questions at the end of the chapter that if someone wanted to go a little bit deeper, they could go a little bit deeper. Well, that's one of the things that I found really engaging about the book because when you get to a particular chapter you have an exercise at the end of the book and it really causes you to go inward and this is really important because to grow as a person you have to learn a little bit about yourself mm -hmm. and introspectively we have to do some work sometimes that we don't necessarily want to do. And one of the things as we're talking, it makes me think about not only do we want to reflect about, okay, how did I learn to become or identify with why I have maybe chosen this particular path or gained a certain set of ideals or, or mm -hmm. set of it, you know, parameters with the way I view things, these certain mm -hmm. perceptions. But here's something else. If I have gained these specific sort of, um, we all have sort of um, these specific stereotypes, racisms yeah. and things like Definitely. that. And, and, and mm -hmm. everyone has them. Yeah, definitely. We have them. They and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's geared towards one specific thing or not, but everybody has a set of something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we just have them. It just is right. innate from the growing up in a certain set of familial things. And you'll see this through the mm -hmm, documentary. Mm -hmm. And it and it it does not necessarily mean one one only one thing it can be right. something i mean mm -hmm. but there is mm -hmm. something Correct. so and, and if every if every one of us says no that's not me it's not true there's something you mm -hmm. just have to mm -hmm. you have to understand that but here if we can identify that and change this this is a set of being able to mature and grow but here's another thing is becoming accountable and changing that so that, especially if we have children, mm -hmm. stopping that, 
so mm-hmm. that those things don't happen and continue generationally. Correct. And this mm-hmm. is really something that is really important to note and identify. And there's a lot of different things in this whole spectrum. It's not, it's not a, a closed thing. I mean, we can right. have these different ideals and perceptions on, on a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could be, it is it, food. It could be, yes, yes. I mean, it could be a number of different things, but when it comes to society, especially with where we're at right now, this is something hardcore to take a look at. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that when I was formulating the questions and thinking about the movie and then trying to put myself in the audience's point of view, I wanted to make sure that the, the documentary was not trying to tell someone how to, to live their life or try to make them see it a certain way. I wanted it to be more open-ended so that they could look at it and still make their own decisions. So it's not like right. it's a, a, a preachy type of thing where I'm saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, this is the right way. I just wanted to say, hey, look, here's six people, six real life people randomly selected and right. look at the answers to their questions and then you decide like how you feel how you feel about that, you know, and then try to relate it to your own life. And then you just make your own decision. So I didn't want someone to be turned off by, oh, you know, it's just a movie, you're going to watch it, and they're going to tell you you're wrong. And, and this is right. I just yes, or you're to- trying to make this prejudice or bias. Correct. And, and we're going to sell you on this. I, mm-hmm. I totally get this because you see a lot of this now. And this is one area that has been unfortunately pitting people against each other yes. for mm-hmm. certain agendas that we're seeing. And this is mm-hmm. not okay. I mean, th- this is what I thought, and this is what I was telling you before that we were trying to get away from. And it seems like this has sort of been coming back yeah. because, yeah. And, and this is not okay. This is yeah. just a, a not okay thing. And I really, I really liked some of the questions that you had because it brought me back to something that was really interesting that no matter where we were at, there were a lot of things in childhood that we did that were all the same. Yeah. That surprised my mind. Yeah. That really, it even surprised me when, because the six people, there's some similarities between the people, but there's a lot of differences between the six people. And when they responded and it, it, to me, it was shocking because I said, there's no way some of this stuff is going to be similar. And when you hear the similarities, I just looked and I said, wow, that's amazing. Like, just how is that possible? Like that there uh-huh. are some things that are so similar and so positive. And then, then as you get older, then it takes this turn and then, you know, people can kind of go in different directions. And then, but you can see the influence of how those different directions come about. But when you, yes. when you go all the way back to childhood, you see the similarities. You see the, a lot of the similarities. You know, it's really interesting that you say that. And you can, you can see like the age at where certain things become yes, like, yes, yes. like this. And it's really, yes, yes. I'm not going to give this away because I want people to read your book and I want people to hear and see on screen for themselves because they'll be able to self-identify and go, wow, this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I need to be aware of this, especially if I have children of my own so that I can ensure that I don't play into this. I mean, this Mm -hmm. is really, really an important thing. And Mm -hmm. I was able to go, oh, that Mm -hmm. happened to me too. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I, you know, I and yeah. what was really interesting though was that I came from a very diverse background where I grew up and so I didn't I saw things I didn't see things in yes. some of the ways until I was moved from the diverse culture into a very mm-hmm. segregated right. culture and mm-hmm. then at that age where the light bulbs went off, it, it was very apparent because yes, of certain yes. things that you were through those questions. And then mm-hmm. it was, I could see things. 
it was really, it was there. This unveiling was really quite interesting. And, Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't go, I don't want to go into detail because (laughs) I want people to be able to self-identify so that Mm -hmm. there is, is something that they can do and make changes for as well. This is very, very profound for a lot of different reasons. And I do think it is something that needs to be in the education system and Mm -hmm. brought out so that changes can be made in such a healthy way. I really encourage people to read the book so that they can utilize the tools at the end of the chapters and really go introspectively and say, Hey, I, yeah, Mm -hmm. whoa, this is, this is really cool because I had not looked at things from Mm -hmm. this angle before. And even if they have maybe this point in their life, it might be something different now for them than it had in the past. So oftentimes Mm -hmm. we need to revisit things that yes i agree with that definitely you know because there's different points Mm -hmm. in life that things mean things different plus when we have different stages in life that have happened environmentally and where we're at Mm -hmm. now the climate is very different than it was 20 years ago in our society so we need to revisit things and say okay Mm -hmm. how does my life and this impact with the climate that I'm in now need to shift so that it can make a difference. These are very, Mm -hmm. very important things. So tell me too, what's on the horizon with what you have going? Because these are, this is important. Do you have another, do you have another showing what's going on? Um, So right now the, I'm just doing interviews and talking to different people to, to spread the word that, um, you can, you know, you can watch the the film or you can read the book or you can do both. You just go to Amazon.com and you can find uh, the streaming video for to watch the documentary or you can find the book. Um, and when when I th- when I first conceived the idea to, to make it into a documentary, I did it as volume one. So my goal was to do volume two, three, four, five and really just continue probably up to one. 100 because there's so many different angles that you can you can look at this um and for me i think it's a non-threatening way to cover some sensitive material because it could be a situation because it's uh you're dealing with a person of color it could be um a part of the lgbt community it could just be some kind of because the world is becoming increasingly diverse at some point in everyone's life we're going to come across a situation it could be a work situation it could be um you could be in a store it could be someone who's 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 helping you you know receive a service and you can be in in an unusual situation if you're not aware that the world is just more diverse and you're going to come across situations so i i my my thought was to just keep doing different episodes and asking almost the same six questions and just exploring different avenues of and perspectives to to make it a a, a more soft and gentle way to 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 touch on touchy subjects basically. <laughs> I like you that because you don't want the person to react negatively, you know. No, I really like that. And even at this stage right now, I think that educators could take this as a tool and get as creative as necessary to address certain topics that are really needed at this Mm -hmm. point right now to make Mm -hmm. a, a really good change within the classroom that is needed. So if they are saying, okay, how can I address bullying? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. They can say, okay, let's take Kevin's documentary and say, okay, we're going to do this. And now at the end of this, I want you to think about the question of bullying. And so for right now, until, and as you're going to come out with more, but I really think, 
that this would be a really helpful tool for educators to start getting really creative with addressing really heated mm -hmm. topics like you're saying and coming out with a soft approach because really ultimately your goal is to get beyond and to get people to be more cohesive on these things that are biases and um, and causing such division. And I really right. love the fact that you were sitting there and you said, I have this question and I need to talk to my parents about this. And that was number one. And that is probably mm -hmm. the biggest thing that is happening in our world today, the lack of communication with parents between the oh, children and not going definitely. to the parents. Mm -hmm. And that is number one. And mm -hmm. I don't know why kids aren't going to their parents, but they're not going to their parents. They're seeking questions from their friends. They're looking for answers through yeah. media or TV shows. Right, and right. They're, they may not even be going to their teachers, but they're mm -hmm. not going to the right sources. So mm -hmm. the, first, the first line, you know, and if you, if hopefully if we get somebody that's, um, a student right now that is watching this, please go to your parents because they're the best yeah. place that you can get any answers from. And mm -hmm. if you're not going there, go to your, go to your teacher. Your teacher is someone that you can trust and get good, good answers from. And if you're an educator, this is a great time for you to utilize a resource that can really soften a hard topic and this is through a good documentary that you can use in a series of so small short bursts of yeah. different things because in there's six questions and mm -hmm. you can use these in just six different increments in your classroom to get a good good set of things instilled within the thinking process, critical thinking within your classroom over six weeks, maybe, mm -hmm. or six days. Yeah. So is, I think this yeah. is a great, a great thing. And uh, Kevin, if you're, you keep moving on this, this is something educators can keep going on in the classroom. These just short bursts over time can really right. change the right. thinking process. So this, this is really, mm -hmm. really a great tool. And I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm very impressed. And my show is all about making changes, positive forward thinking changes in somebody's life. They can take something, a tool or resources, a resource or more that, that somebody can use from today's show and make their life different from today forward and you have done it and i want to thank, thank you thank you appreciate it really appreciate it uh and so, one of the yes things that we noticed was when um uh i had just finished the editing of the film and i had talked to a few of the people that are in the film and the time period between filming it and finishing it was a few months so in, the, in that few month time period, it was amazing the stuff that we were seeing on television and just how stuff was changing. And uh, the people in the film were sending me messages saying, wow, this documentary is more important than ever. Like, because just, just when stuff was happening in the news, we all just came, came to the same conclusion. And it was just funny because when I would watch the news, it would inspired me to keep going because I said, wow, like we're really getting off track. And I was thinking it, but not only was I thinking it, the, the people in the film, they were thinking the same thing enough that they said, let me send him a message and say, hey, did you see this? That kind of relates to, you know, the film that we were just in. And that, that was something else that surprised me. You know, as, as, as I watch the news each day and you see how certain stories are unfolding or some certain un injustice is done to uh, different gr groups and types of people, you can see that the, 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 the subject matter of the documentary in the book is very important. It's, it's, it's very timely. It's very timely. This is really exciting. I would, you know, hope that all of those that were involved in the project would continue in the project and maybe there's something later that you can do that's that ends up saying now based on 
10 years down the road, here's something else that we found that you, you know, you can continue to do yeah. more yeah. research yeah. that is done, because I think that this is going to be really important from you took the certain years, those were mm -hmm. 1970s or 60s. Now you can take, yes. you know, turn of the century kind of thing. Yeah. Say, yes. That's, yeah. This is something that happened in 2020 compared mm -hmm. to 1970 or, you know, I mean, yeah. major, major differences and you can look at different significant changes. So I think you have something going here that's going to be very, very important to a lot of historians and to a lot of people yes. that are in, yeah, I, I think that this is going to be really important and I'm going to definitely want to follow this as well, because this is in my world of helping people and making changes and things with what I do in the lay person of psychology. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have a degree, but this is something that I find really important in helping people um, want to be a part of. So Kevin, I, right, I right. want to follow this and stay, stay, stay abreast of what you're doing. And I definitely want to help with whatever you, whatever you're doing to get that message out there mm -hmm. so that it continues to help broaden people's minds and mm -hmm. the ability mm -hmm. to make an impact that is really positive in the lives of our communities and our nation and hopefully globally. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a huge yeah. impact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing I wanted to add about the book is um, when I started to write the book based on the documentary, one thing I kept in mind was I have a lot of nieces and nephews. And when I look at, uh, you know, the younger generation, they, some of them may not really want to read a 300 page book or 250 page book. So I made sure that I condensed it down to just the, the, the most important parts. So the book is about 50, right at 50 pages. So I, I, I just wanted it to be something that someone could read on a lunch break or, or in the evening where they don't have to say, oh, I got to schedule out a whole week to finish this book. You know, I wanted it to be something that they could really consume and read and, and, and say, hey, I read that whole thing, you know, and I got something from it. I didn't want someone to get lost in the daily parts of life that just come at them. And you have this 400 page book um, in addition to their homework and whatever else is going on in their life. So that's, in my, my opinion, that's one of the, the, the easier things about um, trying to really see this point of view and really learn from it is that book is easily read. It's not, it's not going to take more than, it'll take less than a day to, for someone, you know, a young person to get through the material. So. I love it. I absolutely love it. You can find information on this documentary at, uh, oh, at Amazon. Yes. Um, yes. You can also find information about your production, your film production, right? Productions mm -hmm. at kevindouglaswright.com. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and there's a website for the documentary and the book, and that's I learned it from you.com. Yes. We definitely want to get this information out there. And I want to thank you so much for being on the show, Kevin. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you very much for having me. And I want to ask all of you to make sure that you get connected with Kevin, get connected with him on Facebook, like the page, get connected, share the information on Twitter, get this information out there. Please help make a change with this. Watch the documentary. It is on Amazon and go to these websites, learn about this, take a few minutes and read through the book and do the little exercises that are in Inside these chapters. It's, these are easy exercises, but they are impactful. These are so important for us to really get inside ourselves and see what's going on in there. And I'm going to tell you, they're going to bring you back to a time in your life and take you to where you're at now and see what you're going to want to do with it. In fact, I got to tell you, 
it really brought a smile to my face. And I thought to myself, wow, here's where I'm at now. And here's what I want to do even more than mm -hmm. where I was at before. So I'm excited. I hope you will feel the same type of excitement. And I ask that you share this episode with all of your friends, your family, your colleagues, everybody that you know, both on social media and not on social media, and everybody that you don't. And oh, I want to add one more last parting word. Um, I always try to give a free gift. So um, I have one free copy, a, one free digital copy of the book for uh, a member of your audience that you can choose to give to whomever in your audience. Well, thank you so much. Okay, yes. so get in touch with me, Rebecca yes. Mahan at publicist.com, and we will uh, get out a digital copy to one of one of you. So make sure that you share this with all your friends, family, and get in contact with me, Rebecca Mahan at publicist.com, and tell everybody to tune in. Thanks for watching.